All right, hi everyone. I'm Justin and this is Valley Hockey Talk. Today I'm bringing you the top fantasy hockey waiver wear pickups of the week. But first I wanna thank everyone for watching and remind everyone to please like and subscribe. It's much appreciated. All right, so the waiver wear is so important in fantasy hockey. It's so important in all fantasy sports. Uh, but in hockey, it's really important because you're always trying to tweak your lineup, put the best guys in, have your best matchups. And it's really important to stay up on players that are on hot streaks and dump players that aren't playing very well. Now, obviously, you're not going to dump, you know, star players in the league or good players in the league when they go on a bit of a cold streak because people are going to pick those guys up right away. And then that's going to be a great waiver wire pickup for them. But I mean guys that you've drafted maybe late in the draft or guys that haven't performed yet this year, guys that are performing very well and you know that you can't get any trade value for them, you might as well drop them and pick up these guys on the waiver wire. Now, of course, if you can trade them and get some value back, do that first, maybe offer a few trades, and if not, go to the waiver wire. But if you wait too long, a lot of these guys are gonna be snatched up right away. So I recommend staying active on the waiver wire, seeing who's available, doing your research, and picking up these players when you need them. All right, so I'm gonna get right into it. So the first guy I have on the list, now keep in mind, all these guys are great pickups. It just depends on who's available in your leagues. This is all based on Yahoo and their standard leagues, okay? So all these numbers might be slightly different from yours, uh, but this is just the Yahoo standard league. Okay, so anyways, first on my list is Andre Burakovsky, plays for the Colorado Avalanche, plays on the second line with Nazem Kadri. He's been playing really well as of late. He was brought in this summer by the Avalanche to bring some depth scoring to the team. He's certainly done that. He's currently ranked 106 overall, uh, which is pretty good. He's only 33% owned, so there's a good chance he's available in your leagues. He's got eight goals, eight assists, he's a plus four, and he's got 40 shots on goal, so it covers those categories very nicely. And with Landis Cog and Rantanen still out, he's been playing on the first power play unit as well, and he's been playing really well lately, so he's definitely a guy that you want to pick up. And even when Landis Cog and Rantanen come back, he's still probably going to play with Kadri on the second line, and it still looks like a very high-powered offensive team in Colorado, and I think him and Kadri are starting to really click. All right, next on the list is Jared McCann. So the Pittsburgh Penguins, they've been tormented by injuries all year. First it was Malkin, now Crosby's out long-term. Malkin's picking up the slack, and so is Jared McCann. So McCann is actually a former first overall pick by the Vancouver Canucks. He's currently playing on the second line right now for the Pittsburgh Penguins. He can play center, he can play the wing, and he's also playing on the first power play unit. So he's got all the skill. He just hadn't really developed in that player that the Canucks thought he would be or that the Panthers thought he would be. Um, but maybe he's finally realizing that potential that he had and playing into it. Uh, but he's only owned in 28% of leagues, so he's still available. He's getting picked up really fast, though, because people are seeing that he's really picking up his production. He's ranked 139 overall. He's got seven goals, five assists, 32 shots, and he's plus 15, which is also really important. And like I said, he's getting a lot more ice time right now, and Pittsburgh's going to give him every chance in the world to play to the potential that he was drafted at in the first round a few years ago. All right, so next on the list is Philip Deneau. So Philip Deneau is the first line center for the Montreal Canadiens most nights. He's a great two-way center, amazing in his own end. And he's actually really heating up in his production right now, which they really need because Drew ends out for a long time. Uh, but that first line of Deneau and Tatar and Gallagher is always a great line to watch. Really hardworking, really skilled. And Deneau has been playing excellent. He's only owned in 15% of leagues right now, so he's probably available in your league. And he's ranked 143 overall. So he might not be on people's radars yet, but he soon will be. So I'd recommend picking him up. He's got six goals, nine assists, plus nine and 30 shots on goal and he plays on the second power play unit. So he's gonna be you know, thrust into maybe a bit more offensive situations. He plays a lot of ice time because he's so great defensively, and Julian really likes the way he plays. So he's just an overall great player, and he's playing on the first line for the Canadians, so he's definitely gonna put up some points. All right, so next on the list is Brandon Saad. So Saad plays for the Chicago Blackhawks. Everybody knows about the terrible trade for Panarin. They thought Saad pairing him with Taves would kind of spark that chemistry that they had when they won those cups. And you know what? He didn't really play that well, but he seems to be coming on a little bit this year. Like I said, he's playing on the first line with Taves, and then they have like Nylander playing on that first line. They put Kane back on the second line with the Brinkat and Strom, and they were really strong last year. And it was kind of curious as to why they didn't have that line coming out this year. They had Kane up on the first line with Taves, and then DeBrincat and Strom were kind of struggling a little bit this year. Uh, but now with Kane back on that second line, they've been phenomenal, and the Blackhawks have actually been winning a lot of games lately with those guys. So, anyways. Brandon Saad has also been playing very well, and he plays on the second power play as well. He's only owned in 13% of leagues. He's not a very big name, and he's only ranked 202 overall, so definitely a guy that should be available in your leagues. He's got six goals, six assists, and 46 shots on goal. So the Blackhawks started off really slow. They're playing really well right now, so now's the time to start picking him up. 
start picking up Blackhawks players if they're starting to heat up. Next guy on my list is Anthony Bilvier. He's 6% owned and he's ranked 164 overall. He's a very talented kid. He's a former first round pick. Uh, he plays on the second line with Brock Nelson as a second line center, really underrated center, really underrated team actually in the Islanders. They play a really defensive, boring system under trots, but they get results and they put up points. And Bolvier has been playing really well. He's got six goals, six assists. He's plus five. He's got 36 shots. He plays on the first power play unit with Barzell. So he's getting all the opportunity in the world to show his skill. And he is a very skillful kid. And if Trotz is getting the trust back in him, then he's going to start to have a better season and he's going to start putting up more points. And we're seeing that in the short time span of the last few games. So now's the time to pick him up because you're going to miss out if you wait too much longer. All right, and the last guy on my list uh, is kind of a bit more of a deep sleeper because he's only owned in 7% of leagues. So he's probably available in your league. He's ranked 302 overall. So you might be thinking, well, he's not that good. But Kirby Dock of the Chicago Blackhawks, I just talked about how the Blackhawks are playing really well lately. He was number three overall in this past draft, in the 2019 draft. He was drafted third overall. So he's got all the pedigree in the world, all the skill in the world. Really big, tall center, really strong, great puck handler. Just an overall intelligent, great player. And he's got five goals, four assists, plus three, and 19 shots. He started the year off injured, and then it's taken him a lot of time here to kind of get into the swing of things. Uh, but now he seems to have found his game, and he's playing really well. He's putting up a lot of points the last couple of games, scoring a lot of goals. Now, I'm not saying that he's going to be able to sustain this forever, but if you're in a deeper league and you need a guy to pick up right now or you want to take a chance on a kid that was drafted really high, now's the time to pick him up because if you wait too much longer, he's going to be gone because if he keeps shooting like this and playing like this, he's definitely going to be picked up. And he has, like I said, he's very talented and he can find the back of the net. So it'll just kind of depend on opportunities and where he's played. If he plays in the fourth line all the time, he's probably not going to get the opportunities he needs if he never gets any power play time. But he's definitely got potential. And certainly if you're in keeper leagues or dynasty leagues, uh, he might be a good option for those as well. All right, but anyways, like I said, always be active on your waiver wire. Let me know in the comments if there's any guys that you think should be picked up right now. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.